morning, church. Morning. What a glorious day that the Lord has blessed us with. Amen. So we know that from this last song we've learned that we have to humble ourselves in the sight of the Lord, but also that we have to trust in him as he is our strength. That is exactly what we read about in our scripture reading for this morning. If you'll turn with me to Psalm 18, verses 1 through 3. Again, that's Psalm 18, verses 1 through 3. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, in whom I will trust. My shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord, who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Good morning, church. This time next week, Chris Bartlett, Trent Nicewanger, Angie Sunday, and myself will be worshiping with our church family in Guyana. And uh, to that, our song leader says, sing hallelujah to the Lord. I guess because Mark's not going to be preaching. Uh, All hail the power of Jesus' name, but lest you become too haughty, you need to humble yourselves as you think about that. We... um, We're excited about going, and I'm excited about those that will be filling in for us. Uh, It's going to be a a fantastic uh, trip once again. Thank you all for all that you have done to make it possible and your continued prayers for the success of the mission effort there. We want to um, uh, continue to remember our brothers and sisters in Guyana as they uh, labor, and it is a labor. Uh, we're, We're in a very different... Uh, field to labor in than they are and there are a lot of things that make uh, their lives easier and there are a lot of things that make our lives easier and they aren't the same things so we want to constantly remember um, our brothers and sisters wherever they may be Uh, we have um, a great opportunity here in the northwest to reach people with the gospel of Jesus Christ and we need not take that lightly And as we have opportunity to share that gospel, we want to do that as well. And so we look forward to this trip and look forward to being back with you um, in three weeks. Would you pray with me, please, as we begin? Our Father and our God in heaven, we thank you so much. We, We love you, Father. And we thank you for being our strength, for providing us what we need in order to get by each and every day. Father, we thank you for the lives you have given us and the opportunities you present us with. And we ask you to help us to not pass those opportunities by. This morning, as we look into your precious word, please bless us. Speak to our hearts and minds that we may be encouraged. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I'd like to return to Psalm 18. Appreciate so much all of those that participate in our services, especially our young men and the encouragement that they provide. This particular lesson is based on uh, one of our young men's devotions from our devotional guide. Uh, Where's Braden? There he is. He's sitting right over here this morning. And uh, he, he provided us some great food for thought in his devotion. And I want to bring that forward uh, today as we look into this particular verse. I want you to notice the subtitle to the psalm. To the chief musician, a psalm of David, the servant of the Lord, who spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day that the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And he said. And what was it that he said? These first three verses are where we would like to focus this morning. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. 
The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from my enemies. What an incredible word picture the psalmist paints for us, that the Lord is our strength. Too many times I'm afraid that we wait until we're out of strength before we turn to our strength. Instead of taking hold of our strength as we enter into circumstances in our lives. Take him with us so that we don't find ourselves, so to speak, at the end of our rope. Maybe if we trusted in God and not in ourselves we would not find ourselves so far down the rope when we're calling for him. I don't know. Because I know God allows certain things to happen for our development. But you know, the, um, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. And I think sometimes we as Christians try to do the same things over and over and over again, but we expect a different result, spiritually speaking. And perhaps we need to change what we're doing. Let's allow this psalm to speak to us today and then be encouraged by some other sections of Scripture as we draw these things together. Look at how the psalmist, as David, speaks these words to God and then records these for our benefit. He says that he is his rock his fortress, and his deliverer. He also calls him his strength, his shield, his horn of salvation, and his stronghold. In all of these words, the idea behind them is strength, unending strength, defense. And when you look at the fortress of the picture that I've put up here on the screen, the ancients would usually build these fortresses on high places. So not only did the walls provide you protection, but so did the terrain. It made it more difficult to even reach the wall, much less to scale the wall. And so the word picture here is this huge fortress that is built around us, not only to protect us, but to deliver us from whatever is coming our way. But what does this actually look like? See, this is where we begin to to not understand God. How many times have we gotten ourselves into a circumstance, individually, collectively, whatever it may be, and go, God, what am I doing here? Why did you allow this to happen to me? Go read the Psalms. David himself asked that very question several times. Oh Lord, will you forget me forever? This is a man after God's own heart. But yet, he found himself in a predicament where he did not know what to do. And so what does it look like that God is our fortress? Because, you know, I try to serve God and I try to do what I I need to do, but it just seems like things just continue going badly for me. Well, I want to ask a question. Because if he is our strength, if he is our deliverer, then who is it that is afraid? It's funny in the scriptures... In the King James Version, 193 times the word afraid appears. And most of those occasions, it is someone being told not to be afraid. Why are they being told that? We discussed it in our Bible class this morning. They're being told that because they are afraid. They're not being told not to be something that they aren't. They're being told to not be something that they are. And so if we trust God as our shield and the horn of our salvation, our strength, our deliverer, our fortress, if we trust him as all of these things, then why 
are we afraid? That's the question we have to ask. And who is it that is afraid? Well, it's Jacob, the one through whom the seed is going to come. Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, the son of Isaac. Jacob, who, whom God has promised, has appeared to him in a dream, has promised him that he's going to be delivered, promised him all of these things, and yet, in the face of Laban, in chapter 31 of Genesis, and in the face of Esau, he was afraid. He was afraid. But yet God had made a promise to him, and he's still afraid. Moses, Moses appears before the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3. And God calls out to him, don't be afraid. God is speaking to him from the bush. He says, I'm going to send you back and you're going to bring my people out. But don't be afraid. And Moses comes up with every excuse in the world to not do what God said because he feared Pharaoh. He was afraid. Now, there's a bush talking to you, which is kind of odd. And is the voice of God telling you things that you couldn't, that the bush obviously couldn't know, much less verbalize. And God appears to you in this manner, and yet you're still afraid. And here's Moses. What about Elijah, one of the great prophets? Elijah also makes an appearance with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration in Matthew chapter 17 with Moses. And so here's two right here of our Old Testament saints, these giants of the faith that we look up to. And Elijah is told not to be afraid, but to go and speak to a particular king about the demise that is coming upon him. Why would Elijah have to be told not to be afraid? Because he was afraid. He was afraid. The apostles, they had seen Jesus do incredible miracles. And yet when a storm comes up, they're afraid. On one occasion, Jesus is in the boat with them. On another occasion, Jesus is walking on the water. And both occasions, they were frightened. And Jesus had to tell them, do not be afraid. You know, sometimes we go, well, you know, if Jesus was right here, I wouldn't be afraid. Well, it didn't stop them from being afraid. And by the way, if you're a Christian, he's already with you anyway. You need never forget that. What about the Apostle Paul? The Apostle Paul had been tormented on his second missionary journey. He had uh, been beaten, he'd been jailed, all kinds of horrible things had happened to him. And he goes to Corinth, and the Lord appears to him in a vision and says, Do not be afraid, do not be dismayed, but you speak boldly. Why was he being told not to be afraid? Because... Here's another town, another place, and here it comes all over again. And God says to him, do not be afraid. So why? Why are we afraid? You know who else was afraid? Probably the greatest military leader that's ever lived. My father, a 30-year career retired Marine Corps lieutenant colonel, Favorite Old Testament character, favorite Old Testament book, Joshua. He loved Joshua. He said he was a military genius, and then he always corrects himself, said, well, God was. He loves the strategies employed by Joshua, his leadership, all of those things. And yet, how does it begin? It begins in chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. From the wilderness and Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for to this people... You shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. 
Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all that the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. What a charge from God. What an amazing thing for God to say to Joshua. Joshua has been in the wilderness for 40 years. At the beginning of the 40 years, where was he? He was with the 12 spies. And the 12 spies went in and spied out the land. And they came out and they said, Wow, this truly is a land flowing with milk and honey. It is special. And 10 of the guys, they walk over here and they have a little conversation and they come back and say, but it's too much for us. There's giants, walled cities. There, there's way too. We, we, there's no way we can take this land. And Joshua and Caleb are over here, and they're going, "What are you talking about? God's on our side. God's on our side. This is the same Joshua. Forty years later, he's gone through the wanderings in the wilderness. He has survived those wanderings." By the blessings of God. He has seen God provide for his people. He's seen God punishment and righteousness and reward those who were striving to serve him. Here he is. He has seen his servant Moses. And now he's been elevated from second to first in charge of God's people. And God says, just like I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. That should have been enough. That should have been enough. He was promised the territory by God firsthand. That territory is going to be yours. You're going to divide it for my people. He said there's not going to be a man who can stand against you. As with Moses, I will be with you. I will not leave you, nor will I forsake you. This is what God tells Joshua. He says, be strong. And be very courageous. Observe the law. Meditate on the law. And you will prosper. That should be the end of the story, should it not? Let's, I mean, that's, you got your marching orders. Let's go. Let's go. And then comes verse 9. Which begins with a question. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid. Nor be dismayed, for your, the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Who's he talking to? He's talking to Joshua. And he's made him all of these promises. You've seen what I've done. And I'm making you all of these promises. And then he has to come back because he knows Joshua's heart. And he says, have I not commanded you? Don't be afraid. Do not be dismayed because I'm going to be with you. You see, all of these giants in the scripture, we look at them we go, wow, I could never be like that person. And you know what? We're just like them. Because God has told us over and over and over again that he's going to be with us, that he's going to be our strength. He's going to be our provider. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. It's here. You keep turning the pages, and it's over and over and over again. And he keeps making promises upon promise upon promise. And then he has to come to us and says, have I not commanded you? You see, we're just like they were. We're just like them. We talked here a couple of weeks ago about Philippians 4.13 and how Paul says, I can do or endure all circumstances of life. And that's not the end of the sentence, is it? It's through Christ who gives me strength. The strength to endure. 
You see, God comes and God makes those promises. And sometimes intellectually we understand it, but experientially we just can't find ourselves there. And God comes along and says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. If I have commanded you, if I have promised to be with you, what can happen? What can go wrong? You know, things go wrong in the mission field. They do. Things go wrong here in the United States. You know, there was an unfortunate incident this last week. Graduate from Harding University, a song leader in the church. He's minding his own business. He's at home. And he feels somebody, hears somebody fumbling at the door, and he goes and looks through the peephole, and it's a police officer. So he opens the door, and the police officer, for whatever reason, thought this guy was in her apartment. And a confrontation ensued, and ultimately the man was shot and killed. It was a horrible mistake. A horrible mistake. Won't bring the man back. Bad things happen here just like they happen out in the mission field, folks. And so how do we proceed in life? Are we going to proceed scared? Frightened? Or does God say, do not be afraid, because I'm going to be with you every step of the way? You know what? If we trust in God and we believe without question that the power of the blood of Jesus Christ can cleanse us of all sin and cover us to our eternal home, then our brother who was accidentally killed this week is safe in the arms of Jesus. And that leaves us over here dealing with the horrors of it. But you know what that, that man had been preparing for his whole life? To be where he is now. It only took him 26 years to get there. Some of us it takes longer. We don't get to choose. Circumstances happen. And God says, do not be afraid. I will be with you. I will be with you. Even if everyone forsakes you, I will be with you each step of the way. Like Joshua, we need to be reminded of God's involvement in our life, that God's going to be there. And there's something that I like to say, and I don't think it's, it's unique or original with me, but through our prayers, we need to send God ahead of us into circumstances rather than getting to the end of our rope and tying that knot and hanging on and saying, God, why'd you let me get here? Send him ahead with our prayers. Send him into the field ahead of us saying, God, I know I'm going to have a tough day at work today. I need you to go ahead of me and help me out. Many of you have been sending prayers for, for Chris Bartlett and Trent Nicewanger and Angie Sunday and myself so that God is ahead of us on this mission trip that we're taking. I've been praying the very same. Whether it's school, whether it's in your neighborhood, regardless of the circumstance, send God ahead. Remember God's involvement in your life. Keeping God's word is essential to the Christian life. We've got to be engaged in God's Word. We've got to trust reading those promises, or as the songwriter says, standing on the promises of God. You can't stand on them if you don't know them. We need to be in God's Word. Let Him encourage us from His precious Word. And know that God has made a promise, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God will be with us. And though we can't understand it, I can promise you that God was with the young man who was killed this week. We don't know why God allows things to happen, but he was a child of God and God was with him to the very end.
and we question. And God says, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. I'm going to be with you each step of the way. And so we return to our psalm, Psalm 18. I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my strength in whom I will trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Be reminded day in and day out that the only strength you have is the strength that comes from the Lord. You have no strength in and of yourself to make it through the circumstances of this life. But he has promised to be with you, to never leave you, to never forsake you. Put your trust in the Lord. This morning, I know we probably have as many circumstances as we have people sitting here, the things that you're facing. You might be dealing with something at work. You might be dealing with finding work. You might be dealing with a health circumstance that you just don't fully understand. You don't know how this happened to you. You might be dealing with a relationship issue with a spouse or with a child or with a parent. You might be dealing with all kinds of circumstances, but know this one thing, that God will be with you every step of the way. Can we pray with you? Can we pray for you? Can we encourage you this morning and help you walk through that circumstance that you're facing? Or are you here today and you've never named the name of Christ and therefore you cannot truly claim God as your strength? You cannot say, I can do all things through Christ when Christ is not your Savior. Do you believe in Jesus as the Son of God? Are you willing to turn from the sins for which he died? Confess his precious name and be immersed in water for the remission of your sins that is baptized so that you can be raised up to walk in a new life, a forgiven life. Are you willing to do that today? Let us help you. Let us talk with you. Let us encourage you to begin your walk with Christ. Do you need prayers this morning? Our brothers selected a song, I need thee every hour. Nothing could be more the case. If you have a need, please join us as we stand and sing.